Most people buy solar panels before knowing the real number they actually need. This always leads to system failure and the battery will die early or the inverter will start complaining. Now, before buying solar panels for your home, there are a few things you need to take into consideration. A few questions you need to ask yourself. The number one question is, what loads do I want to power with the solar panels? The loads, I mean your appliances. What appliances do you want to power with the solar panels? Or what appliances do you want the solar panels to power? Appliances, we have television, we have refrigerator, we have fridge, we have air condition, we have um, water pump, we have blender, a lot of them, depending on your own uh, choice of appliances that you're using every day. So answering this question uh, will help you in uh, knowing or choosing the number of solar panels that will serve you per day. Another thing is the appliances. Are you using them only at night or you will use them both during the day and at night? If you are using them only at night, it means you need solar panels that will only harness or generate energy that will be stored in the battery so that at night you'll be able to make use of this energy to power your appliances. If you're using the appliances during the day, it means you need to uh, choose the number of solar panels that will power the appliances during the day and also sufficiently charge your battery bank. So for you to know uh, what you need, you need to look at the specifications of your appliances. That is the wattage, the power rating of your appliances. All electrical appliances have what we call power rating. And you can find this on the nameplates of the appliance. Like the television, if you look at the back of the television, you will see a small sticker. On that sticker, you will see power consumption or you will see power rating. If there is no power, you will see voltage and current. If you multiply the voltage by current, you will have the power. So the power of your appliances, uh, you know, will go a long way in setting the foundation on uh, where you are going to build your solar system. Now, the next thing is to know your runtime hours. Runtime hours, I mean the number of hours you will be using these appliances per day. Your television, are you using it for four hours? Are you using it for five hours? You have other appliances like your electric kettle, you have your blender, you have your air condition, you have your refrigerator, your water pump. All these appliances, you need to jot them down, you know, write their wattage and also write their runtime hours. Why? Because you want to arrive at something. And what is that? The total daily energy consumption. It is the first or the foundation, the bedrock when size in sizing a solar power system. You need the total daily energy consumption of your appliances. When sizing a solar power system, you are not sizing it based on the size of your building, based on the size of, you know, your room. You are sizing the solar power system based on the appliances you are using per day. The solar power system, that is the components, the inverter, the charge controller, the battery, the solar panels, all of them depends on what you are using, not on the size of your building. You are not connecting the building to your inverter. You are not connecting the building to your battery bank. You are not connecting the building to your charge controller. Rather, you are connecting these appliances to your inverter if you are using AC appliances or directly to the battery bank if you are using DC appliances. So it is very important for you to know your daily energy consumption. For you to know your daily energy consumption, after knowing your power rating, you multiply the power rating by the runtime hours. If your television is 60 watts and your runtime hours per day is five hours. That is, you're using the television five hours every day. You multiply 60 by five. It will give you the total daily energy consumption of that TV every day. Other appliances, your water pump, how many hours are you going to use it per day? Then the next thing you have to take into consideration is your peak sun hours. This depends on your location. Like in Nigeria, if you're in northern Nigeria, you have a of peak sun hours as compared to me i am in southern nigeria so i need to know my peak sun hours so that i will be able to calculate 
how much energy my solar panel will be able to generate per day. Because if I have a 600 watt panel and I'm using it in southern Nigeria, the energy it will generate per day is lower, will be lower than the energy it will, that this same panel will generate if I install it in northern Nigeria where there is enough or abundant sunshine. So you need to take into consideration your peak sun hours. And if you're uh, choosing your peak sun hours, look at the lowest value per year from January to December. What is the lowest value? For my own location, I always use 2.5 hours per day that is the lowest the lowest but in southern nigeria you can have an average peak sun hours of four hours or 4.5 hours depending on the state you are residing in so so these things are very important and they will guide you in properly in sizing uh, your solar power system that will power your appliances power your devices efficiently without any issue then the last thing for you to take into consideration is the power rating of the solar panel you want to use. You want to use small panels, you want to use large, uh, big uh, solar panels. We have 200 watts, we have 100 watts, we have uh, 450 watts, we have 550 watts, we have 600, we even have 700 watt solar panels. So it depends on where you are going to mount them, whether on the roof, you're going to mount them on the ground or on a carport or on a pole. To make this calculation very easy for you, you need to prepare a load analysis table. You will check the description and comments of this video. I will drop a link of um, a video I did on how to size a solar power system for a small barber shop. There you will see how to prepare a load analysis table. From the load analysis table, you'll be able to get your, your total daily energy consumption and the total power rating of your loads. So for example, if after all your calculations, you arrive at maybe your total daily, what you're consuming, you have a fridge, you have a fan, you have a lighting and all that other appliances, and your total daily energy consumption is four kilowatts hour, which is 4,000 watts hours. You have your total daily energy consumption is 4,000 watts hours or four kilowatts hours that is 4000 divided by 1000 to convert uh watt hours to kilowatt hours you divide this by 1000 so if i have 4000 watt hours how many solar panels do i need to generate this energy per day and i'm using these appliances only at night because during the day i'm not around so i only need the solar panels to generate enough energy during the day to store in my battery bank so what i will do I will pick this figure. If you check my videos on how to size a solar power system, the first thing is I will divide this 4,000 watt hours by my inverter efficiency, which is 0 0.9. So this will give me 4,444.4 watt hours. Then the next thing I'll need to do is I'll divide this by performance ratio, which is 0 0.65. This performance ratio will take care of losses, take care of shading. And also, you know that ideally a solar panel cannot generate 100% of its rated capacity from uh, morning to evening. So you have to take that into consideration. That is why we have this 0 0.65. So if we divide this figure by 0 0.65, 6,838 watt hours. Then the next thing is I'll divide this 6,838 watt hours by my peak sun hours. I am using 2.5 hours. So this will give me 2,000. 735.2 watts. This will cancel. The R will cancel. So what I have is 2735.2 watts. And I want to use 625 watt solar panel. I will divide this by 625 watts to know the number of panels I need, the number of 625 watt solar panels I need. 
So I have 4.3 uh, pieces. So I'll use four pieces of 625 watt solar panels. I'm having four pieces here because my peaks on hours is 2.5. But if your two peaks on hours is maybe five, let's use five hours. If your peaks on hours is five hours, we'll have one, that is this divided by five, we'll have 1,360, 1,368 watts divided by 625 watts, 2.2 uh, pieces, which is approximately two pieces, two pieces of 625 watt solar panels. So you can see that your peaks on hours, the number of solar panels you're going to use depends on, also depends on your peaks on hours. This is based on your geographic location. So if yours is four, you put four here. If it is three hours, you put three. If it is six hours, you put six hours. So this is how to know the number of solar panels you need. Now, this is to charge my, uh, uh, to generate the energy that will be stored in my battery. Maybe I'm using a five kilowatt hour lithium battery. And this four kilowatt hour, remember that a five kilowatt hour, like the day five, uh, 0.12 kilowatt hour, uh, the, the DOD, the recommended depth of discharge is 80%. So if we take 80% DOD, this is 5,120 watt hour, uh, multiplied by 0 0.8. So we have 4,096 watt hours. So this is the usable energy. This is the usable capacity you can get or take from, you can uh, take from the battery, the usable capacity. So if I am using four kilowatt hours per day, I can use a five kilowatt hour lithium battery or a 7.5 kilowatt hour lithium battery. So uh, you also know that uh, depending on the inverter you're using, inverters also have their standby consumption. Even when they are not powering any load, that is what they use to power themselves. So uh, they will also take a part of, um, they also take their energy from that battery to run their internal uh, circuits. So if I have a 5, point, uh, 5 kilowatt hour lithium battery, and I also want to pump water during the day and also run my freezer during the day. What I will do is that I will also take into account uh, uh, the, the loads. That is the uh, pumping machine, the water pump, and the freezer. So if my water pump is 800 watts and my freezer is consuming 200 watts, so it will be 800 plus 200 watts. So this will give me 1000 watts, which is the same as one kilowatt. So this is the additional power I have. But these loads, I only want to power them during the day. And I don't want them to take anything from my battery. Everything, uh, the power they are using should come directly from the solar panels. But remember that the solar panels I have, I only have them to, you know, generate energy that is sufficient enough to charge my battery, even in worst case scenario, that is during cloudy days. That is why I use 2.5 uh, hours as my peaks on hours. So what I will do is that I will divide this 1000 by my performance ratio, which is 0 0.65. So what I will have is 1538 watts. So if I divide it by 600, and I'll divide, now divide this by 625 watts. I want to know the number of uh, solar panels I will add to these four pieces of 625 watt solar panel. So that is why I'm dividing by 625. So this will give me 2.4, uh, which is two pieces. So I will add, it will be four plus two. So I will have a total of six pieces of uh, 625 watt solar panels. Now I can use, I can connect these solar panels to my hybrid inverter, like the Dyer 6 kilowatt hybrid 
inverter. I can connect all of them in series uh, to the inverter. Now, uh, this system, uh, it will be difficult for this system to fail because you have enough solar panels to generate the energy you need per day. You have enough solar panels to pump your water when uh, there is sun. That is between 12 noon and 2 p.m. You have enough solar panels, solar power to pump water and your freeze, your freezer, sorry, will can run for 24 hours with this. Because during the day, the freezer is depending solely on the solar panels. It is not taking anything from your battery. So before three, four hours, your battery is already fully charged, waiting for night use. So at night, that is when the freezer will not take power from the battery. But at that time, the power consumption of that fridge will drop from 200 watts, like my own. It is 570 liters. When you switch it on, it will consume 200 watts to 220 watts. But after 12, 14 hours, the power uh, consumption will drop to around 110 watts. It will be fluctuating 110, 115 watts. So with this, you can run your freezer for 24 hours. It all depends on energy management, how you can manage your appliances, manage the battery you have, the solar panels and everything, how you can efficiently manage them you know, to supply or give you the desired energy you need per day. Remember, solar is not generator that you just buy fuel and put, then switch on the generator. You start turning on every load you have. As um, you do that for solar, if you have a five kilowatt hour lithium battery and you connect appliances, you once you switch on the inverter, you start switching on different appliances, you switch on AC. Mind you, this one cannot carry your AC from uh, money to you. I mean, um, uh, throughout the night, the system will surely shut down because the AC will, uh, you will not be able, this, the, the five kilowatt hour will not be able to serve you. If you want to use air condition throughout the night, don't go for five kilowatt hour lithium battery. So what you should know is that the number of loads you connect to your battery, you know, that those loads will be taking energy from that battery. So if they are heavy appliances, they are taking, you know, high amount of energy from that battery before you know the battery will be depleted and you the inverter will be showing you low battery so learn how to manage your energy if you are switching to solar either here in 2025 or as we are entering 2026 learn how to manage your energy efficiently and if you manage your energy efficiently you enjoy solar and if you do your calculation very well by knowing the number of solar panels you need, the size of battery you need, you know, the size of inverter you need, it will be difficult for that solar system to give you issues unless you are using fake uh, solar components or low quality solar components. But if you are using premium quality solar uh, uh, components, it will be difficult for that solar to shut down. So thank you for watching. And uh, if you have any question, please drop it in the comment section. And also let me know where you are watching from. See you in my next video. Bye.